So the purpose of this video is to explain the difference between a hypothesis, a theory, and a law. This is something that there's actually a huge misconception about that I'm hoping to address with you today. Uh, the misconception is that a lot of people view this, you know, like the, uh, the evolution of a Pokemon, right? That, like, the hypothesis is the little guy, and then, like, the theory is somewhere in the middle, and then the law ends up being, you know, the fully evolved form of something. And honestly... This concept is a complete misconception. That is not at all how the process works. Um, theories do uh, theories and laws can grow out of a hypothesis, but it's not that the whole thing is a progression from like one to the next. Uh, the basis of everything in science ultimately is the hypothesis because that's how the scientific method starts. But theories and laws are two entirely separate things. And I want to spend some time with you in this video just breaking them down and making sure you understand how all three of these are completely separate ideas. So the first thing for us to talk about is a hypothesis. And we've dealt with these a little bit already when we're talking about the steps of the scientific method. But a hypothesis is always going to involve some kind of an if-then statement. I know the if part is going to be the independent variable. The then part of the statement is going to be the dependent variable. Uh, the other thing for you to consider is that a hypothesis is just the idea of like one scientist or sometimes you know a small group of scientists if they're working together. Uh, but generally, a hypothesis is not going to be something that's accepted by most people in the scientific community. It could eventually become something that is, uh, but it would require a lot of experimentation and many, many repeat experiments supporting the same data over and over again in order to progress to that point. So a hypothesis is still very important because it's the beginning part of the scientific process, but it's not as well-founded as a theory and a law as we'll be talking about in a minute. So at this point, we've established that theories and laws ultimately grow out of a hypothesis, but we really have to talk about you know, how a theory is different from a law. Um, for starters, a theory is much broader than a law. Um, the thing that's important about a theory is that it's supported by scientific evidence from multiple sources. So a theory is like a very broad, like overarching idea, whereas a law is much more pointed and specific. Uh, to give you an example of a theory, We'll talk about evolution at the end of the year. And evolution, in a lot of ways, is the culmination of everything that we've been talking about in biology. There are a lot of ideas that go into this topic. You know, for example, genetics is a part of evolution. There's information that we'll cover in cells that'll be important there. There'll be lots of fossil evidence that we'll look at. There's even behavioral information. That's an eye. But, uh, behavioral information that, that goes into you know, the theory of evolution. So you can see something like this is extremely broad. I mean, it's pulling topics from a lot of different areas. Like, we'll spend whole chapters on genetics, a whole chapter on cells. And we won't spend specific time on fossils, but there are whole groups of scientists you know, that just specifically study fossils. And all of this information gets pulled together to become part of the theory of evolution. So theories, by their nature, are very, very broad. And um, that's something that sets them a, a little bit apart from a law. So we'll spend some time in the last segment here just looking at a law and, and what makes that different from a theory. So if we examine this one, the thing that's important about a law is it shows us how nature behaves in a very specific set of circumstances. For example, one law that you're probably very familiar with, or I guess I should say a set of laws, are Newton's laws. Right, so Newton has laws that apply to motion. So these are very specific. It's an extremely detailed set of circumstances where we're looking at things. And we all know that you know, Newton apparently got his inspiration from you know, that apple falling on his head. You've probably heard that story you know, many times in science classes. And he ended up coming up with his three major laws of motion. So these things are all very specific, and they involve a certain set of circumstances. So the thing to understand about a law, and I'll write this down for you so you can have it, is this is very specific. 
and it deals with one set of circumstances. So a law and a theory are two entirely different things. I mean, they're both very well supported by scientific evidence, but they're just two different things by nature. A law is always going to be much more detailed, whereas a theory is much more broad and sort of overarching. Both, though, end up with the support of the vast majority of scientists. You know, there are very, very few scientists, if any, that are arguing against the concept of Newton's laws of motion, because it's something that has been scientifically proven. You know, same kind of thing with evolution. There are very few scientists that say that things like that are not happening. We have this tremendous base of evidence that supports the concept. So hopefully this did some good in clearing up the differences between a hypothesis, a theory, and a law, especially that idea that they kind of progress one from the next. You know, theories do not become laws. Laws do not become theories. They are set things. They are different. Again, laws are more specific, whereas a theory is going to be much broader and overarching. Thank you very much for watching.